I'm Todd Lewis from Fiasco Sports, reporting for the SA Football Magazine. Today I'm joined by Ryan Shipway from the Westminster Old Scholars Football Club in Division 4, and he's going to do our weekly roundup. So we'll just go through the results from the weekend. Edwardstown defeated Colonel Light Gardens by 44 points. Hope Valley unfortunately went down to Paraka by 3 goals. North Haven had a big win over Kenilworth by 11 goals. And Westminster Old Scholars defeated Salisbury by 27 points. Obviously a good result there. Uh, yeah, very good result for us. Um, in the A grade, round one, we lost to them by a kick out at Salisbury. So it was great to uh, get the win at home this week. Uh, from bounce back after a, uh, after a loss last week. So good to be back on the winner's list. Yeah. What do you think were some of the keys to bouncing back this week after losing last week? Yeah, I, I think our contested ball was a lot better um, than it has been um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, and we really went in pretty hard, I thought, um, and rewarded with a rest coming into the bye after a pretty physical contest. So we're really happy with that side of our game. Yeah, and who were some of the better performers on the day? Uh, we're really happy with Scott Blazing's game yesterday. He was very good. Um, our coach at the moment, um, with Luke Donaldson away, Dan Wakeland, led really well in the ruck. He was a great contributor. Um, and we had a lot of young blokes in the side with a few of our older senior players out that stepped up in first games um, for the A grade this week. It was fantastic. Okay, and obviously it's a B grade coach. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Yep. How did you go on the weekend? Yep. Uh, we unfortunately went down by about 10 points, I think it was, in the finish to Salisbury, who are they're a quality club across the board and very consistent at A grade and B grade level. So um, we were really um, pleased with the way we started the game. We just didn't quite round it off. Um, and, you know, a quality side like that unfortunately got the better of us. We'd hopefully like to be able to get another crack at them in finals and learn a lot from yesterday. So, okay, Tell us a little bit about some of the players in your side that you're pushing to try and get gain A grade selection as everyone should be striving to do. Yeah, uh, we've got some, some great experience in our B grade at the moment. We've got a, um, probably the best depth we've had in a couple of years. So there's um, people that have played at A grade level that are sort of working their way back through at the moment after sort of a little bit restricted pre-seasons. Guys like Chris Geddes, we're hoping to get Nathan Woods coming through the mix in the next couple of weeks, who's um, been a really good footballer at uh, higher levels. Um, we're hoping to have him back and pushing for selection. Had a couple of young guys who've had really consistent starts to the year in um, Harry Marker um, and then also Kirk Hull who had their first A grade, grade games yesterday and they've just had a couple of weeks of really consistent efforts. Um, so being able to do that and then take the step up yesterday was fantastic for them. So we're hoping to have a few more of those over the next couple of weeks as well. Yeah, definitely. We'll move forward to next week's games. Obviously, you've got the bye next weekend. After that, North Haven take on Eastern Park at yeah. Largs North Reserve. Who do you think will win that one? Uh, that'll be a pretty tight one, I would think. They're, they're both great sides, but I would think uh, North Haven at home would be good there. Yeah, and Colonel Light Gardens take on Hope Valley. Uh, yeah, again, that's another tight game, but I'd uh, tip Colonel Light Gardens to get back on the winner's list there. Yeah, Salisbury take on Kenilworth. Uh, I think, unfortunately, for Kenilworth, Salisbury will be too good in that one after what we saw yesterday, yep. Yeah. And Edwardstown, Edwardstown have the bye, and then you head out to Paraka to take on Paraka. Yeah. How do you think the ones will fare? Um, we weren't too great out at Paraka last year, and we've got a few road trips coming up, so we're really fo looking forward to get out there. Um, I think we'll, if we can play the kind of footy we did yesterday, I think we'll hopefully uh, go a long way to getting a result for us out there. Obviously with the bye coming up, is there anything you changed this week in preparation for that game? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a pro probably a pretty big hit out on, um, on Tuesday. Uh, Thursday we'll have the night off and just get the boys together and support one of our sponsors in the Holdy um, down there at Glenelg. Um, and then we've got a few of our guys from over the EP way that are actually um, looking to play Mortlock Shield footy over there, um, so which would be good for them to get something different. Um, but yeah, we'll try and have a little bit lighter week. But Coming off our last buy, um, we weren't that great, so we're hoping to keep the intensity up during the week and then really push out um, next week with a couple of solid hit-outs. Okay, and I'll also ask you in the B-grade competition, what do you think you're expecting from Paraka? Uh, yeah, they're, they're a great footy club. Um, we'll hopefully go out there and if we can play like we did at the start yesterday, I think that'll go a long way to getting us a result. Um, the wet weather's starting to set in, so I think you'll see a lot tighter score lines coming up. So we need to make sure our contested ball's right up there from the start to get a result. 
Okay, thank you, Ryan. I'm Tom Lewis from Fiasco Sports, reporting for the SA Football Magazine. I've been joined by Ryan Shipway from the Westminster Old Scholars Football Club in Division 4, and he's done our weekly roundup.